All right, it's 2025. And if you are not using a password manager for pretty much all of your passwords, uh, I'm just gonna say you're doing it wrong. We have literally had decades of password leaks and database dumps and shared passwords and hacks and all this stuff happening over and over and over again. And people are still out there raw dog and passwords. Just let me think of something random and I'll type it into the prompt, right? Like no one will ever figure it out. It's like, no, like this is, this is crazy. I started using a password manager back in 2008. I have been doing this for a little while now. I do not know any of my passwords anymore. I do not care to know them. It has just taken a load off my brain to not even think about this stuff. And I've used a lot of password managers in that time. Since, since starting in 2008, I've used KeyPass, LastPass, 1Password, Bitwarden, and a handful of other ones that I don't remember the name of. But I've been trying to find a good way to securely store passwords for a variety of things. These are server passwords, website passwords, all sorts of things. And I know pass keys have been out now. They've, they're, they're the proposed solution for all of this password fatigue. Maybe one day we'll just do pass keys everywhere. I don't like pass keys right now. I still don't like their implementation, mostly because they're not portable. I've been able to migrate my password database because it's a portable asset that I control. It's just encrypted text. And encrypted text is actually pretty easy to decrypt, put somewhere else and re-encrypt it. When I moved off of LastPass, it was super easy. I just dumped the database and imported it somewhere else. And I thought it was gonna take me weeks and weeks of time, but actually it took me a few hours. I went through, I imported all of my passwords and I reset all of the main passwords. This video is sponsored by Passbolt. This is my first full sponsored video. Thank you for Passbolt for reaching out and asking me to talk about password managers because it's something that I've been using for a long time. I've converted my family members to using password managers. I've been an advocate for them at my companies, and I think that they are the right mix of, we need security and we need a way to securely share some of this stuff. How do we make that happen? And password managers have solved that at the individual level for some things and at a team level with other products. And when Passbolt reached out and they said, hey, we have an open source password manager that you can self-host and we also offer it as a service, would you be willing to check it out? I was like, yeah, actually that sounds great. Open source and security are things that go well into my wheelhouse of things that I look at really frequently. I never take sponsored videos lightly. I'm not just gonna do them for the money. I've, I've said no to lots and lots of companies uh, that asked me to make videos for them. I'm like, this just doesn't make sense for me. So in most of the sponsored videos, I just say, no, thank you. You know, there's plenty of other people that can make that video for you. I like to find the things that make sense for me and for my audience, and I research them deeply. The first thing I did when I was looking at Passbolt as a password manager is I read the white paper. They had a white paper out that showed their security. They showed how they secure the vaults, how they secure the client side of thing. It's in browser BGP. And that's great. That's like a known technology that just works. Like BGP is, is pretty solid as far as encrypting passwords and doing it on the client side without the vault needing all this stuff. It was wonderful. Reading through the white paper, they had great diagrams to help me understand how the flow works. I'm not a security expert, but I enjoy learning about security and I enjoy seeing how secure things are implemented. So being able to wrap my head around some of the calls and some of the flows on how a user logs in, where passwords are stored was great. I was just, I could see all the technical details and the fact that Passbolt was open source, another nice thing for me to look at. So again, thank you Passbolt for not only bringing Passbolt to my attention, but also sponsoring this video. And the thing I was most interested in with Passbolt was the self-hosted ability, right? A lot of people will say, hey, you can use things like KeyPass or Vault Warden, and you can run some of these password managers yourself. I've used many of them in the past. And the things I didn't like about KeyPass was the fact that syncing for the, the vault was kind of manual. You had to set up something like a sync thing or some way to get that if you wanted it on your phone, because I don't just use passwords on my computer. I'd use them on multiple devices and being able to have a central repository to store that and sync it down, I didn't want to manage the, the syncing side of it. So that, out, that was out for me when I was trying to do that. I moved to Bitwarden for a little while because I was trying to move off of LastPass. And to be honest, I just didn't really like the clients. I didn't like the interface for it. I didn't like some of the things inside of Bitwarden. They just, they just didn't click for me. And I knew that if I was gonna start using it, I needed my family members to also use it. I know some people love it. I'm not trying to convince anyone of using one password manager versus another one. I'm just saying my opinions here and things I've tried in the past. What I am trying to convince you of is using a password manager. That 
the takeaway you should have is you should be using a password manager in 2025 and beyond. So with Passbolt, the thing I wanted to show you most was actually how to self-host it. Thankfully, Passbolt has a bunch of documentation for this. Uh, they have documentation on just running it in Docker and on a bunch of different servers. If you have a server that you have somewhere that is, is publicly accessible or in your shared network or secured with Tailscale, something like that, you should be able to just run this thing and have it work. I'm doing this in Docker because I don't have a permanent setup here. I don't want to uh, fully try to like migrate everything. I wanted to see what the architecture was like just to see how, how it works. And so straight off the bat, there's just a copy and paste command here. Just copy and paste this Docker. I like that they give you the little check for uh, checking the SHA of the Docker compose file. And we're just gonna run two things. We're gonna run a, a database and we're gonna run the Passbolts application itself. There are some options to do things like Redis, uh, and running it locally in Docker is going to create some volumes for you to store some some quote unquote permanent data. Uh, it's not mounting files, it's just doing Docker volumes if you're familiar with how that works. And this was a pretty easy setup. There was one uh, spelling mistake in the documentation. I already emailed them to say, hey, you should probably fix that. It uses the old Docker Compose syntax. No big deal. I also tried setting this up on Kubernetes. Uh, I have Kubernetes clusters in my house. And I was like, well, what would this look like with a Helm chart release? And the Helm chart release was starting to work, but I realized they're using Bitnami images. And if you're looking at this right when I'm posting it, uh, beware that the Bitnami images are going away. But it's not quite ready yet, which is why I didn't go that route for this video. Once the containers are running, all you gotta do is create a user. You need an Initial user, and this is where some of the like self-management of Passbolt is something that I didn't really care for. This felt old school, uh, which maybe isn't a bad thing, but it just it felt like things I've done in the past where you're executing into a container and you're running like PHP scripts, and that's fine. Like the PHP runs the world. I'm not saying this isn't like a secure thing. I'm just saying it feels older and having a CLI or something that calls an API endpoint is usually like a, a better experience. But I also understand for an initial user, you don't really want like an open API to say, oh, just, just call this API and we'll create a user for you. But once I had that set up, everything else was, was pretty smooth sailing. You create your first passphrase. I kind of like this, uh, this kind of like check on where what server you're connected to. This is an anti-phishing mechanism so that when you're logging in, you're not on someone else's server. It's the one that you picked and you know you picked it because you just set this up ahead of time. And that's really it. Like once it's up and running, creating passwords, importing passwords, managing users, you have all the flexibility in the world because you are an admin on this machine, on this application. You can do whatever you need to do, including having open registration so people can come register on your server or invite only and you send invites to those people. The things that uh, you do need to set up that are kind of difficult that really depend on how you're running this. Uh, emails. How do you send an email to someone? How does the system send an email for a thing like an invite or, or a share or something like that? You need some way to share that. There are tons of ways to do this. There's free services that'll give you like hundreds of emails every month. SendGrid, Resend. I think you can even do it through just like Gmail's SMTP servers. Like all of those are options. I, I started setting that up. I didn't go down the whole rabbit hole because I was going to run out of time on this video if I showed every step. The next thing I did was installed the system extension. System extensions are just integrations with the back end. Honestly, they all kind of work mostly the same. You install the system extension, you log in, and then you have a password autofills. This is how LastPass, 1Password, Bitwarden, they all work the same here. And Passbolt is no different. You install the extension and log in and it's connected. I went through and generated a bunch of dummy data just to see what it looks like to manage Passbolts and see how it organizes things. And one thing that was different here uh, was the fact that it has folders that actually have nesting in them versus like labels and tags that other password managers usually have. Like uh, one password has a vault and then you have labels and you can share the vaults, but it's hard to kind of make fine grain sharing decisions based on that. You kind of need to have a vault for access. And in this case, I could actually share folders with people uh, on on the server based on like the hierarchy of the folders, which made that organization really nice. Not only can I share individual items and just send this, you know, share this with a user, I can do it at the higher levels. And that was, that was pretty neat. It wasn't something that I'm used to seeing on other password managers. After that, I tried connecting my phone. And this is where I ran into some problems. Connecting my phone requires a QR code scan, uh, which is a, a fairly common kind of newer way of doing this like mobile setup. Uh, I could not get it to work because A, I was running this initially with a, a Passbolt local sort of, or a local host address, which isn't available from my phone. 
cool, no problem. I can publish this on my network and make it available. I was trying to do tail scale. My phone's on tail scale, my desktop's on tail scale. That application is available over my tail nets. So I should be able to secure this locally in my tail nets and be able to access it without needing to open up like a full like HTTP route from the outside, right? I don't need this publicly accessible. I just need it available on my tail net. I couldn't get it to work. Uh, I couldn't get it to work from the machine name, from the tail nets. I tried it with TailSail Serve, which is like a web server for internal traffic only. I tried it with TailScale Funnel, which will publish something publicly. In both cases, it didn't work for me. I don't know if that's a tail scale limitation or why it wasn't connecting properly. But in any case, my phone didn't work from within my tail net, self-hosting this on my desktop. If I had it probably in a Kubernetes cluster, something with proper ingress or load balancing or, or at least a dedicated IP address, I'm assuming this would have worked, but I didn't get it working. Again, Passbolt has a bunch of different ways you can install this. Not only can you do it with Docker or on top of Kubernetes, but they just have Ansible playbooks. If you just have a server somewhere, you can throw it out there. That'll probably work a little better than what I was trying here for a demo setup. And they also have a blog post and documentation on how to run it in an HA mode. If you need something that is for like enterprise grade, you don't want a single Docker container running your pass bolts. Because the architecture is traditional, it's just a database and an application, you can scale out the database, you can do backups, you can scale out the front end, you can, it can talk to the database. That side of it was just really straightforward. It was actually really cool. To be honest, if you're this deep into the, we need to self host this and you don't have a password manager today, you should just go try the surf and generate some passwords. If you have some stored somewhere, just put them in there. The last thing I will say is I did like Passbolt's emphasis on team and sharing. I don't think that passwords exist in bubbles anymore, especially not at companies, but even in a family sense. So having a password manager that does emphasize teams and sharing sharing and also open source and just being able to host it yourself in case the service ever says, hey, we're going to start tripling your costs. You have these options to say, actually, I'm going to run it myself. So I came away from this whole thing really impressed with Passbolts. I didn't know about them going into it. And when I compared it to all the other things I've used and tried in the past, it's a great option for people that either are looking to self-host, they want something small, teams that need better sharing, or in general, you just want to have a password manager. If you're not using one, please just start using a password manager today. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.